Let's do it, yeah, Shane. There you go, man. Absolutely. Welcome, everybody, to our channel, Shane and Karan. No, wait, we're, are we going to give the name of the show in the beginning or we do that at the end? We can do it uh, anywhere. Doesn't Either way, matter. yeah. People are going crazy about the content of this show. <laughs> they, they love it. Not a single episode has come out already, but we're already viral. viral. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> right? In our yeah. own minds. So, Karan and I are, are both business owners. Very different industries, but we've been friends for a long time. And uh, we had some ideas about what we wish we knew back when we first started that we know now in business as successful business owners in our own industries. So we wanted to share a couple of those tips with you guys. If you're brand new, um, maybe you're kind of in the middle of your industry or maybe looking to jump into something new, hopefully you'll find some value in some of the things that, that we'll share today. So Karan, tell us a little bit about like what it is that you wish, first maybe say like what it is you're doing right now because you got a lot of stuff happening. Way more than me, actually. You're like... Jack of all trades. Jack of all trades, man. You're yes. everywhere. Yes. So uh, we, we have a good uh, real estate brokerage practice here in Arizona. Then we have a mortgage uh, company. Uh, apart from that, we own a family fund center. Then we own a commercial building and a few uh, residential rentals. So that keeps me busy all day. Yeah, well, let's give it a shout out. Like Makuto's Island. If you, are, if you have a family... And you're looking for an awesome place, you got to check it out. It's in here in Chandler. And um, first time I ever had Indian-inspired pizza. Yes. <laughs> it's actually pretty good. <laughs> so, Karan, so what do you call it? It's called uh, paneer pizza. Yeah, it's pretty good, man. It, it, it's really good. It's widely popular. You're probably the only person in town that sells it, too. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right? yes. It, it's very popular. See, th th that's where the, the interesting things happen when people with different backgrounds get into different industries. Like I had zero experience in restaurant industry, but I know as a consumer what I like, and then based on my cultural background and my upbringing, right, it right. is totally different and uh, diverse things that we all bring to the table. Yeah, someone and like me is not gonna start a pizza restaurant and offer that, right? Because I have no yeah, idea, yeah. So, so, so the, that's why it's, it's very important to talk to people with different backgrounds, even though you are coming from a different industry altogether, yeah. I really enjoy the uh, masterminding sessions that I have with Shane because the, the reason for that is he's able to view businesses and uh, uh, the, the details of the businesses in a different at a different level altogether, and we can learn so much from that. So I'd like to know how you changed. Like you changed also, right? You were yeah, doing yeah, something yeah. else before. <clears throat> so. Tell us the story. Okay, well, super quick story. I was in real estate at the time uh, with Keller Williams. It was an amazing company. And in 2015, I made the decision to become a full-time photographer. And at the time, people, uh, including some individuals who were very close to me, thought it was kind of a foolhardy idea to do that. And um, I even had somebody who I felt was um, a religious um, figure in my life, right? Somebody I looked up to. And he gave me some advice, and this kind of will lead into something that I wish I had known back then, but he gave me some advice that I ended up ultimately rejecting. He said, he told me a story when he learned that I was going to become a full-time photographer. He told me a story about how him, when he was a young man, he wanted to become a musician, play the guitar. And he was fairly good, in his own words. And he decided to stop that dream, that pursuit of that dream, because family life got in the way, uh, I shouldn't say got in the way, but family life, you know, all the things that, that come up, right? So he abandoned that dream, and his advice to me was to also abandon my dream. And I rejected his advice, and so since 2015, I've been a, a full-time photographer, and had I listened to him, the past seven years of my life as a photographer would have never existed, you know what I mean? I would have been doing something else, working a nine-to-five, working for somebody else. And, and all the experiences I've had would, would not be a part of my journey right now. And, and what I learned, and what I have learned even more now, is be careful of who you take advice from. If someone is, has not accomplished what it is that you're trying to do, they can only give you advice on how to fail at it or how to quit it. They can't tell you how to succeed at it. So I've been really careful about finding people who are doing 10x, of what it is that I want to accomplish and getting advice from them. And, and what I do is I split them up because not every single individual is going to be able to answer all your questions, right? So if I have social media questions, who's doing 10x what I currently am? And let me go get some answers from them. If I have questions about 
the business side, the administration side, who has a business that's doing 10x, right, of what I'm doing. For example, like with you, with everything that you've got going on, I could easily go to you and get some insight into how to run a bigger organization or scale up, right? If I'm looking for photography specific things, if I'm looking to who's a photographer that's 10x where I am, and let me go to that person and get advice. And so me looking back, say, Shane, look at everybody that's trying to give you advice and tell you what to do. If they're doing 10x or more than what you are, listen to them. If they're not, then they can only teach you how to fail at it or how to quit it. Don't listen to them. And also you have to stick to the basics. Think about it. Even in a middle school or an elementary school, one teacher doesn't teach all the subjects. Right, yeah. You have a math teacher, then you have arts teacher, you have an English teacher. The, the purpose of that is everybody can can become an expert if they focus on one thing. Right. And then you need to, first of all, focus your dream on one thing. And then you need to get advice from the right people. Because granted, everybody has good intentions in their mind, but if you are getting the wrong advice from the wrong person... Right, right. Or uh, that's going to completely mess up your path, the, the trajectory as to where you're trying to go. And it's interesting, there, there, is there any event or any circumstance that led you to believe that you have to like switch? Like It's totally different that you went from real estate all the way to uh, something like arts. Yeah. Totally different. Well, it, it, it kind of had a lead up into it because there was a time in my life where I made a living um, painting, right? And growing up, my mom is very artistic. She She's a designer now, she does dresses, so I've always had that kind of artistic streak in me. And even while I was in photography, I had, um, I was always doing it, or real estate, I was always doing photography. I was started shooting real estate for, for the agents in the office, or headshots, something super simple. And my business coach, Mike Bastion at the time, he, we're sitting down, we're going through the numbers at uh, KW, and I think that year we, we sold about $260 million in real estate. And Mike Bastion says, uh, Shane, would you pay to do this job? I said, Mike, you know, I love the money and I love the agents, but I would, you know, I wouldn't pay to do this. Mm -hmm. And he says, what about photography? Would you pay to do photography? And I said, Mike, I do. When I'm traveling the country, I'm paying for workshops and my own photographers to teach me and coach me. And just for like a minute, I went out. I was super excited. And Mike is on the phone because he's in Austin, Texas at the time. And we're on a phone call. And I remember sitting back at my desk and I go, oof. And Mike was brilliant because as a coach, he didn't inject his own thought there. He just let it simmer. He let me think about the energy I put in those two conversations. And I remember saying, like, Mike, you know, essentially, like, what, what, what am I doing? Yeah, I could, and he says, Shane, you could take what you are actually passionate about and have a life of purpose doing uh, what you really want. And um, it wasn't the focus of our conversation. We were there really to talk about real estate, but that was just, we, he was also an amateur photographer. We talked a lot about it. And so I don't think he intended it to have the impact that it did in my life, but uh, it did. And that, that put me on the path and gave me um, the internal confidence to say I can do that. Yeah, Shane, uh, in all sincerity, I wouldn't undermine the power you had in yourself wherein you are risk-taking to switch from, to a different career. I can share my experience because... I, I had a limiting belief growing up in the sense that the people who mentored me also were in the same kind of uh, sphere wherein they always had a job, they never quit their job, they were extremely hardworking in their job. So they set up for me to have a job. Right, so that was your whole focus is all, all your heroes were doing nine to fives, you know what I mean, working, getting a really good job someplace. And then, so how, how old were you when that was like, you recognize that, hey, this is my path. I'm going to go get this amazing job and, and be so, a good worker. So, so when I came to this country, I came to this country to get my master's at ASU, right? And how old were you? So uh, I was uh, 23. And you, and you had an experience with your dad, right? What was that experience? Because that was kind of interesting how, how that came about. And yes. So, so my, my dad, of course, when uh, I decided to come to the U.S., he, he always encouraged me, right? He encouraged me to just apply for the jobs, uh, apply for U.S., get your GRE, TOEFL, all your academic requirements. But at no time, he really believed that I would be able to go from India to U.S. at all. So I got my visa, and then he was kind of like, take it back. <laughs> because two things, I mean, financially, he was not uh, strong enough to be able to uh, 
uh, send me to U.S. and then if something wrong happens, he didn't have the wherewithal to bring me back, right? Okay. So, so uh, just the tickets of, uh, of the flight to fly from India to U.S. and to have me survive for a couple of months is probably his annual, annual income. Oh. So, so. Wow, really? Yeah, so. So it's so, a huge deal then. It's a huge deal. So, so what he did was, okay, I don't have the reserves to fund your, your plan, but this is what I can do. Since you're passionate about it, I'm going to buy you a one-way ticket. It's wow. a one-way ticket. You take the ticket, you go. I mean, my story is not, not unique because there is thousands of students who come from India like that. Yeah, because but that's like unique to an American because like we're not sending our kids off one way one ticket way. to India. Yes, right? yes. It's coming in the other way. Yes, yeah, so, so the one way ticket concept was like my dad clearly said, okay, if you're here, if you're hungry, I can feed you. My dad literally sat with me like mm -hmm. that. So if you're here, I can buy you clothes. If you're here, I can take care of you. Granted, you're 23. Even if you're 30, 35, I can take care of you. But once you step outside the home, once you take the ticket, go to US, there is no way I can. Don't even call me saying that you're in trouble. If you're in trouble, you're on your own completely. So it's like this, right? That, that was a huge amount of responsibility at that age. But uh, the responsibility will make you more strong, stronger than ever. But then you are packaged and sent off to, right. this, to this land of opportunities with a limiting belief. Imagine this. You came to US, you're told, and your goal is to just find a job. Right. And then thrive, take care of your family. But the reality is, if you are stuck at it, I wouldn't be where I am right now. Because after that, after I worked at Intel for eight years, we, we took the giant leap, just like how you did. Right, right. We get, got into real estate. And now we have uh, 30 employees. We were able to create livelihood for other people. Then we bought commercial buildings and all that. So had I been stuck to my limiting belief. Right. And the limiting belief was, like, define that for us again. What was that limiting belief when you, when you first came over? So, so the limiting belief is your goal is just to find a job and then work hard in the job. Right. Regardless of your uh, passion or your strengths or your abilities to take it to the next level. So quitting job at Intel was like a biggest shocker. And my mom was so, <laughs> so against me quitting the Intel job. Because your Intel father had, paid for a one-way ticket for you to go out there and you're quitting the job. And you're quitting the job because it's a dream job, right? Right, right. So, so my limiting belief was like, why are you quitting the job? But my wife had a clear vision saying that there is so much of opportunity in this land. There is no way that we have to be stuck to it. There's nothing wrong with the job. Nothing right, wrong it's with a great job. job. It's a great job. It pays good. And uh, there is nothing wrong with uh, continuing to work. But if you have alternate opportunities that you want to explore, the limiting beliefs should never drag you down. Well, and, and you had an experience while at Intel that you were talking about. This story blew me away when I heard this. And there was a situation with an individual. I'll let you tell the story. And that coupled with your wife's insight into more opportunity looking outside gave you that courage to make that leap. Dude, tell us what that story was because it blew my mind when I heard it. Yes, th th this was right after the, the September 11th, right? We okay. had the big catastrophe and already I was kind of mentally kind of disturbed with so many people dying and all that. And the world kind of just stalled, right? Right. But then a uh, couple of days after that, then uh, one of the senior managers, he just was in a chair at Intel and uh, around two o'clock he passed away in his chair at Intel. He had his laptop in front of him, he just dropped dead <laughs> at two o'clock. So we had a big meeting at four o'clock wherein he was part of it. Big meeting in the sense it's our team meeting and he was part of it. So at four o'clock, uh, the, all the uh, firefighters came, they took him and it was announced by three o'clock that he, he's passed away. Then in my mind, I was thinking, man, that guy passed away. He was the pillar of our project. The meeting is canceled. We all have to like regroup, go into this condolence meeting and all that. Nothing like that happened. What happened? Four o'clock, we had our meeting just as usual. Wasn't even a speed talk. bump. Wasn't even a speed bump. So that made me realize right away that we are just like a speck of dust. If you work for any oh, company, man. if you think that you, you can, re you're really the mover and shaker, you're really not. So that made me to suddenly realize 
that if I am not able to live up to whatever dream that I think I can achieve, then I have to start on the work like right away. I cannot wait. And luckily, my wife also was. We didn't we didn't have kids at that time, and my wife also said, if you are going to have kids, we both have to quit our jobs to take care of the kids also, because if we both are working, we are pretty much sacrificing our entire. prime time of of we being up and awake right right so so th- that was the intent of of us quitting the job and then overcoming the limiting belief uh, another another strength that that i had in my case chain is i had the limiting belief so much in my heart that i never really thought quitting intel was a good idea just because of the fact that we got like great benefits we have everything that went with the package right everything yeah. it's like really a, a golden shackles you you, you, <laughs> just, you just can't get oh, out oh golden shackles it's a good way of putting it so so then uh, in the book that we wrote the cracking the code to success we we talk about our experience as to why we quit intel and all that part of the dream was to enjoy the garden we had so we 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 bought a house and we had a nice garden that we were you making had a garden? i didn't know you had a garden Yes, gar- you just got into gardening. That was the first house. Yeah, gardening is such a stress reliever, really, 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 isn't it? It's amazing. Well, it's a little stressful right now because I'm out there starting it. <laughs> <laughs> Killed a few things, but I enjoy that process. I didn't know you had a garden. Yes. So, so, so the weird part with Intel was we used to have all the meetings in the evening. We used to work with like Cavite, the Philippines. So all our meetings uh, start start around four o'clock in the evening, and it used to go until like eight or nine. so it was such a frustrating part for me not to mm. enjoy my garden because right, again right. morning we had to go to work so by the time i was done with the meeting it's all dark and there were scorpions so there is no way i could guard it so all those factors right all those factors create the environment but you only get a hint the hint is where you 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 have to make the choice and say okay right. now is the time i'm going to really quit i'm going to quit what i am doing i am comfortable in this chair now i need to go to that chair i just cannot sit in the chair and think about going to the chair i have right. to just, just get up make make it happen right i have to get up i have to make it happen and that making the happen the the, the desire should be so strong that you can do it you did it yeah okay well let's take you okay so fast forward right so you make that decision do you remember what year that was uh, about how long ago i finally Ish. i finally quit in 2008 Okay, so it's been a little while. So 2008, you fast forward to 2022 right now. So what is the thing that you wish you had known back then? Like when you were that kid coming in to America, you were in college. What would you have told yourself? Would you what would you have known back? Wish you had known back then. I wish I knew that uh there is really no nothing should limit us yeah. in thinking or aiming for it. Right. Because When I got into real estate, I knew nothing about real estate. I knew nothing, like zero. Like I didn't even own a house before, right? Like yeah. I, even if I, if my dad owned something, it's, it was in India. It's like totally different country. So starting with zero, and then fast forward, we were ranked in the in the top hundred of the country on Wall Street Journal. How does it happen? How, it's a miracle, right? But 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 the but the entire thing is in at that point of time nobody made believe made me believe that I can be in the top ten. Wow. No nobody told me that, yeah, and I yeah. always thought I cannot be like that. There right, is no right. way I can be like that. So you're looking at other agents who are top. They're they're doing their thing in real estate. You get in ground level, and you're seeing everybody around you who is is well known, and and no one around you is necessarily saying, hey, that could be you one day. I never thought I can yeah, do that. Yeah, you're just going to get in and kind of do you're going to work hard, but you don't know how big you're going to get, but that's outside of your range of possibility. That's outside. The same thing happened with my restaurant business also, right? We own this amusement park. Right. And for I mean forget owning an amusement park. I've not even been to an amusement park growing up, right? We couldn't there were no amusement <laughs> parks that I ever went to. So now I own an amusement park, and in that there is a restaurant. There is all these attractions. We have like arcade games. We have arcade techs. We have thirty employees there managing it, right? But the restaurant piece, I had no idea how to run a restaurant. Right. And had, and then I met I met some restaurant people before I opened it because I thought I should talk to those people. Actually, talking to those people, uh, we 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 get disheartened because. 
if you if you get mm. your advice from people who have not done things uh, before or if they were if, if they probably took over an existing restaurant and they have a way to do it if you tell them your vision they might just write you off and that can discourage you 100% yeah it goes back to kind of my my thing that i wish i knew like hey just be mindful of who you take advice from oh 100% because people are so quick to tell you why you can't do something Pe- people are eager to tell you why you will fail or why it's a bad idea to not to do it right. people will always tell you so that's why my lesson there was i'll i'll not take anybody's advice now uh, but my own advice right and um, m- m- my resolution is if i fail then i am responsible for my failure right so so that is that <laughs> yeah, yeah. so then the, 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 there is two two fundamental things which are like counteract each other one is uh, ignorance is bliss okay right okay if you are in if if you are in ignorance that's the only way you can reach the peak because you didn't know you went into real estate not knowing anything you went into the amusement park business not knowing anything you went into the restaurant business not knowing anything owning commercial buildings But, right, right. <laughs> so all that is ignorance is bliss right? right because in ignorance you are able to do things that otherwise you'll not be able to because if you are having like spreadsheets you're punching numbers you're analyzing then analysis is paralysis right there so yeah, that's why yeah. ignorance is bliss the second the second thing that counteracts it is knowledge is power in the sense that you need to get your knowledge from different sources and you have to do the assimilation of the knowledge and right. and and you have to come up with your own power to advance so in that sense knowledge in these days is so much power it's it's with you and we have access to everything to i mean there is so there is no reason why anybody can't go online and find answers find answers to the things that they want to know or find people who are putting out amazing content amazing content to show you how to do things that are incredible you can build a rocket yeah there's a kid really there was some kid that built like a there's some kid that built like a nuclear reactor and he got like a he was like a boy scout did it for his uh some kind of bear badge and they like went and shut him down so like hey dude like you're smart but Uh-oh. no <laughs> see see they, they even teach how to build big biceps right yeah look, yeah. look at Shane look at me <laughs> so there is knowledge out there i mean ignorance is bliss if you don't know you don't know and then after after uh, people saw <laughs> on the video they gave me feedback that my <laughs> So now I have knowledge like how to do it but unless I do something about it consistently also right right, right. yeah yeah so the example that I always remember people told me what I have to do for few things right mm-hmm. but then you have to do it consistently for example uh, if you go to the gym you work out then you get muscle okay you go for a week you go for two weeks nothing happened you don't see the change but you have to be consistent let's say you do it for 12 weeks or 18 weeks that's when you really see the change so having that consistency and persistence is very important if you are not consistent with the activities or whatever you you sign up to do then there is no point so right. all these things come together right you have to be ignorant you have to be knowledgeable mm-hmm. right ignorant about the fact that how far you can go you have to be knowledgeable at the same time you have to be consistent So all the three have to go together. So if you don't have consistency, you will fail. Consistency is probably I get asked a lot. I shouldn't say a lot. I get asked often like what is the secret to being like a a, a productive and successful full-time photographer, right? And and if you think about it, there is some sim- we'll, we'll kind of back up a little bit. There's a lot of similar similarities between your industry and my industry where wherein there's a low entry to barrier Anybody can go get their real estate license. Anybody can pick up a, a camera or phone and you're a photographer. But the percentage that do it full time, it's very small. Yeah. I don't know if it's 10%, I don't know if it's 1%, I don't know if it's 5%, but it's very very small. Everybody else is a weekend warrior, right? And that similarity we're getting coming from the real estate over to here, I noticed that that piece of it, right? And I and I recognize that um part of that your advice and the people that you're hanging around with the vast majority of them in your industry you could call them up here if you want but if you wanted to be like at the top 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 they're not really the ones that you should be getting advice or insight from it's good to to mastermind and brainstorm with each other but um i i find most of my big ideas 
come from watching those who are doing, like I said, 10x what I'm doing. Getting advice from the right people. Yeah, and then you take that and I, and I modify it to fit me. Like you said, you, you have to internalize that knowledge and then create your own path forward. Yes. Right? Because the truth is, we talked about this before, there's nobody who's going to be, if I followed exactly what you did, I would at best be a second grade version of Quran. Nobody can be a better version of you than you, right? Just like with me in photography, nobody's going to be a better Shane Baker. So when you're getting this advice and learning from these individuals, internalize it, but don't try to mimic their whole career. Yeah. Like, go and make it your own. Make it your and own. That, because no one's going to be a better version of you than you. And also we have to, what I didn't realize that I wish I knew was, um, you have to sign up and dedicate yourself for some activities, the daily activities that you are absolutely able to do oh, to be successful. That's the consistency, consistency comes in play. Because uh, I read somewhere that if you change one percentage of anything that you want to change in your life, mm -hmm. so in 100 days, you'll be a new person because it's 100%. 100%, yeah, yeah. So if you do it for 100 days, they say it's, it's like 21 days is how, how long it will take for you to tweak a habit. I practice, practiced it myself. And it works. 21 days works, but 100 days, it, you just cement the habit. Like, there is no way you can change it. That's really cool. So I implemented a few few changes in my yeah, life yeah, wherein yeah. I wanted to have that habit, wherein I, I want to absolutely do it. Clearing the mail was a big deal for me. Like, I right. never, I hated mail. Uh, but as, as a business owner, mail is important. You get all official communication in the regular mail. Right. And I, um, my assistant used to open my mail and put it on my table, and it's always piled up on the corner. Always, 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 right? So every once, every two weeks, I used to open it. Suddenly I realized, oh, I have hardly any time to finish it. Then I made a resolution that I have to consistently review my email, my mail first thing in the morning before I even touch my email or anything. Right. So do, I, the, do the hard thing that you don't want to do first. Yeah. You have the most energy. Most energy, there, right? yes. Because at the end of the day, it's easy to say, too tired. Yes, that's why they say eat the frog, right? So that concept <laughs> of eating the frog first thing in the morning of the hard tasks and the stuff that you really need to get done mm -hmm. in the morning. I mean, nobody told me that, but then I realized, okay, if I have to do my hard task first thing in the morning or the most important, both hard and the most important. So that would have been one of those things that you wish somebody had given you that guidance. Guidance. Early in the beginning. It's like, yeah. hey, do those hard things that you don't want to do, that take the most energy, just get them out of the way first. First. First thing in the morning. So so th those are the things, if, if, I, if somebody would have told me long time ago, I would have saved so much on late payment fees. Oh, I would, dude, have, I would me, have saved maybe three, four thousand by now. So much heartache that I would have saved yeah. on that, and it's still a process. I'm still going. There's, I'm discovering that in business, as you as you get more and more, you can call it advanced or more money or whatever it is metric you're using in your business. As you increase, new challenges and hard problems come, and then you you never stop having to eat the frog, as you say. There's always something that you've got to do. And the other stuff that's already habit, it's good. You've locked it down, and then you're ready for the new challenges. When people ask me, like, hey, Shane, where do you see your business? How do you see yourself? And I always tell them, I feel like I'm at the bottom of the next mountain I'm about to climb. Because yeah. I think one of the things that I wish I had known a little bit earlier is, is ego. Right? When I first started as a photographer, I was charging $75 for portraits. I was worth 25 but uh, I, I thought I was great, right? I thought it was so good. And, and I've learned it's kind of paradoxical because as I've gotten better at, as a photographer, I'm realizing there's so much more that I don't know. There's so, I feel like a hmm. beginner like on everything. But when I was in that beginning stage, I felt like I knew everything, right? I had this ego and I think that kind of helped keep, keep me back a little bit. It, it stopped me from moving forward in a lot of ways. Uh, and I wish I had known back then that, hey, keep that in check. Always have a beginner mindset because that's going to allow you to, to take a step and move forward and, and do more things.